What's going up, everybody? Chini the Great back for another Write With Me Wednesday. So, today I have a really cool video. At least it's cool for me, and I hope you enjoy it. But I told you in the last update video on Monday that I was chosen, my book was chosen for the beta reader pool on beta books. And what that means is that a bunch of writers put their book into this pool, and then some people read the first and last chapter and decide pretty much whose book is worthy of getting where they will give you beta readers. So if you're having trouble finding beta readers like I was, then the winner each month will um, be given like beta readers pretty much. And I, I want it. And um, that feels cool because that just knowing that they had to read part of it and feel like, okay, this person deserves some beta readers. Like that's cool to me because this whole time I've been doing this, it's just like, my own thing. I haven't really had any guidance. Um, I definitely took a few writing classes in college and that prepared me for what I've done so far, but I haven't been like um, having anyone work with me on this. This, this has just been my project. And um, so, I mean, I didn't know if it was good or bad or just completely awful or what. So it, it seems to be going down a good road. And also, I apologize for my appearance. Um, I just took a shower. I'm getting ready for work. I have less than an hour to film this. And um, it's just a really, really, really busy week. I don't have any days off and I don't have any time to film anything. But I still want to hold myself accountable and get the videos out to you guys on time. So I'm really squeezing it in whenever I possibly can. Uh, usually, I'd be getting ready for work right now and eating some breakfast and making my lunch. But this is more important than that. So um, what I'm going to do is just go through these comments of... The beta readers and share that kind of with you guys without giving too much of my novel away and just writing down their feedback I have my bullet journal here and I'm just gonna write down some comments and see if there's anything that um, that more than one person is agreeing on so if one person pointed out something that they think needs to be fixed and then like four other people did maybe that's something I need to fix or um, yeah, I have no clue. I have not read any of these comments, any of the feedback, and I don't know if they're all going to be like, this is complete shit, how did you win this beta pool? Uh, <laughs> or if they're going to have some helpful feedback. So, with with that, let's just jump into it. I'm kind of excited, but I'm also pretty nervous. Okay, so, I found my first helpful one. One was just some positive feedback. Um, not really any criticism in it, though, so not too helpful. But the next person says, the story is packed full of emotion. That's important to me because that's something I felt like I was lacking. So the fact that at least that person thinks that, um, that's cool. Maybe I'm, I'm trying to like recognize my own faults in my writing and try to pay attention to that. And so for the second draft of this novel, I really, really tried to pay attention to emotion. So I think I definitely still need to work on it, but it's cool that someone has recognized that at least, at least it's not lacking emotion, I guess is what I'm getting at. Then they go on to say, I'm already connected to the main character, which is really important um, for s the reader to get connected to somebody in the first chapter or at the beginning of a story because that's what's going to lead them to keep reading on. I think that the length of this chapter is really good. The only thing I could see adding is more dialogue between the mom and the daughter. Well, th the mom and the daughter. So I'm trying to censor my own stuff so you don't get a view into my novel here. But I think that's some good feedback because I do think I lack dialogue. So one time I had this uh, professor in college who uh, he, when we, we would, well, how the writing classes work is everyone would write something and then you would get together and critique it. And that's pretty much how most writing classes were that I took anyway. But um, I had one professor who said, when we were critiquing each other's stuff, who said, you know, you don't really need to tell the writer that they're doing anything right and that's because they're already doing it so you don't need to whatever they're doing they're doing it correctly so you don't need to tell them that they're, they're doing it correctly what you need to tell them is what they're doing wrong or how they can improve because then they can use that to improve their writing and at, at first he, this guy was a total asshole so the way he said it he didn't say it like i just did he was a total dick about it but um at first you were like whatever this guy's a jerk like of course, if I'm going to like someone's stuff, I'm going to tell them that it's good. But then I got to thinking, I'm like, you know, that's really true. Like, if someone's like, oh, this, um, like the first comment was like, this is develop developing nicely at this point. I'm like, that's great. But, you know, um, 
I can't use that to help me with anything. <laughs> so, um, I, I totally understand what he's saying. So, pretty much when I'm writing this in my bullet journal, it's just going to be the negative comments or the criticism, kind of. Um, but there's definitely a good way to give someone criticism and a bad way. So this person said, the only thing I could see adding is more dialogue between the two characters. So I think that's very helpful. They weren't like, this sucks. You know, that's not helpful. They they offered some some way to improve my writing. So that's very helpful. So I'm going to go on to the next one. Okay, um, this next person has some good feedback. They say, um, I like the way you described the mother. It gave a good mental picture of what she might look like and being sick. Uh, that's another thing I felt like I lack is description. So when rewriting this draft, I really, really try to pay attention to description. And I think I still have a long way to go as far as being really descriptive. And then she goes on to say, I wish they had more time to explain to their daughter what was going on in simple terms and understand um, that she could understand and unite as a family for a moment to love one another. Um, I think that's some good feedback. I think I think I do need to work on that. Okay, so this person says, my first impression on the first paragraph was initially not enough descriptive words to catch my attention. So um, one person said they liked how descriptive it was. This person says uh, it wasn't descriptive enough, which is often what happens when you're getting critique is that people don't agree. Um, so I'm going to try to pay attention to both sides of that. Um, the first person who said I was descriptive enough kind of gave a really specific scenario of what I was describing well. So maybe in general, I need to be more descriptive. Okay, so this person gave a uh, really, really thorough feedback. And what this person is saying pretty much is that you do have to grab the reader's attention early, which I, j I did mention. Um, and he says, at one point, he's not really, his attention's not really grabbed. I think this is a he, he or maybe a she. Uh, this reader's attention's not really grabbed at the beginning, but then at a certain point it is. And then they're just pointing out a couple of sentences that don't line up all within the first paragraph where the mood is kind of shifting back and forth and consistency as a whole is really important in writing and there's that's such a huge uh blanket um a broad kind of category consistency you could have consistency in your descriptive words cons consistency in um time period like uh present time and writing in past tense or past participle all these things so you have to be consistent with that. And then there's consistency in how you describe things and your writing style and dialogue. There's so many things you have to be consistent in. And so this person's saying, um, as far as what is grabbing her attention, it's not really consistent. Like one sentence will grab her attention. And then a couple sentences later, it's written, I guess, kind of plainly and not really descriptive enough and not enough to keep her attention but then there's another part where she gets her attention is kind of held a little bit more so I think being more descriptive and trying to be consistent this is really really nitpicky uh this person's comment is so it's not quite broad like um like the other comments were this is really they're getting really in depth in one paragraph and pointing stuff out which is great and I think I need to rewrite like write another draft and the further, the more drafts I write, the more in-depth I'm going to get, the more nitpicky I need the readers to be. So maybe I'm not at this point yet, but it is good to keep in mind that um, when I'm really going through, I think I think I have a little bit to write before I really just break down every single sentence and make sure it's perfect. I think I have way more work. I'm going to write work on the uh, bigger picture and then get to the smaller details. But I think, I think this is a very helpful comment and um, I'm glad the the reader did get really in depth and explain her feedback. All right, there's eight more comments and then I'm gonna end this video, but uh, I just can't believe this. Like, this is so surreal to me. And I know I'm like kind of totally like, I don't know, being kind of dramatic in this video, but it's just crazy that I've created this whole thing by myself and by my own ambition. And now people are reading it and giving me feedback and some things are really supportive and that's, that's crazy. It kind of reminds me of why I wanted to start writing. And that's just when I was reading, if there was a novel that really grabbed my attention and really I could relate to really deeply, that that blew my mind that someone could use words and language 
to create a whole life inside my head that I could relate to so well. So if I could do that to another reader, that would be the goal. And so it's just cool having people give me feedback and even just saying um, that they connected to a character is just crazy. All right, so I'm going to go on to the next one. This person said they kind of took an excerpt from um, from the chapter and they said, I found this effectively depressing. So this isn't a happy story. I don't know if I've shared that with you all, but the novel I'm writing is not very happy. Um, so, so I guess that's cool. It's effective. <laughs> um, cool. So not really any criticism there, but... I guess that's good. If, that would be good feedback if I didn't mean it to be depressing. So sometimes I've noticed, uh, especially in school when I was taking classes, that I would write something or, or I would read someone else's stuff and I would be like, huh, that's kind of funny. And they really didn't mean it to be funny or that's kind of sad and they meant it to be funny or that's really serious and they meant it to be lighthearted and stuff like that where you just read it differently than how the writer has wanted it to be read. And and then you have to figure out why that is and go ahead and fix it. But uh, yeah, it's definitely good to pay attention to what kind of mood the readers are picking up on, whether it's depressing or funny or whatever. If they if they read this and thought it was a comedy, I would be like, oh shit, I have to fix something. <laughs> so yeah. Wow, this person says, this writing is powerful. I love it. Very descriptive. That's insane to think that someone... That's like, that's what I've been going for. It's just really powerful, emotional, and descriptive writing. So I think I'm getting closer to that, but I think I have a long way to go. But it's cool that someone is just reassuring me, like, keep going in that, in that direction. But they have some more to say. So let's see if I can find any helpful criticism here. They don't understand why the main conflict is happening. Again, I'm going to censor this so that I don't just share my novel with you all. But why... Is this an effective solution to the problem that's going on? Why do the characters choose to make this huge decision that starts the conflict of the novel, that starts the whole plot, that starts the whole story and gets things going? Like, how is that helpful? And I think this is good. This is really what I was looking for from the readers, is making sure everything lines up. And so this person doesn't quite understand it, which means I need to go back and be very thorough and explain why in the writing that, that this is the way that it is. So this is really good feedback because if the writer or if the reader doesn't understand something as huge as this, then I'm not doing something correctly. I really need to go back and fix it and make sure there's no confusion at this point. So I learned in the class that it, it could be helpful not to reveal everything that's going on at the beginning of a story. So that kind of gives some mystery to the story. And I'm kind of doing that with how the mother is sick and what's wrong with the mother. Um, I don't share that until a few chapters into the story, and I guess I don't really know how to do that effectively where I give enough information that the reader understands what's going on and they want to read further, but not just tell them everything outright. And this person has commented, I think it would be helpful if you explained what was wrong with the mother. So I don't explain that in the first chapter. All that I know, all that the reader knows is that she's sick, really, really sick, and she can't really take care of herself. And I don't think I want to share what's wrong with the mother in the first chapter. So I don't think I'm going to take this person's advice. But if I had several people commenting that and saying they're kind of confused about what's going on, then I might share some more information. Maybe not tell them everything that's wrong with the mother, but just give them a little bit more that they can put the pieces together. So I don't think I'm going to just outright tell them in the first chapter, but it's good to pay attention to other readers. If there's a lot of people saying they're confused, then it would be something that I need to address. And something I've found that plenty of writers do, especially new writers, is they're not being, they're not explaining everything well enough. And I'm totally at fault, clearly, because it's, I've had a few comments up till this point where people are confused about whether it be something big or something minor. Um, this person is just kind of confused about one little scene, why something went the way that it went. And uh, what's going on is that in your head, you have a perfect idea of what's going on. You have a reason for everything that's happening. And you just have to put that on the page clear enough for the reader to understand it because they're not inside your head. They can't read your mind. And so it's something tons of writers do, including myself. It's just not explaining things well enough and assuming that the reader can kind of see your own thoughts. So it's good to pay attention to that. I'm glad this person brought that up so that I can address that, even though it's just a really minor scene, something very small. If it's confusing, then it's not effective. So um, that's something that I need to explain a little bit better, apparently. Okay, so this person has a lot of helpful criticism. They're saying they weren't quite pulled in by the opening sentence, which um, 
one other person has agreed to and then another person has disagreed and said they were pulled in right away. So different conflicting ideas. But this is the second person that said they weren't quite pulled in right away. So maybe that's something I need to work on. And then it says, um, it feels like opening a book in the middle. So I had this professor who really stressed that you don't need to take forever to build up a story. You want to start right in the middle of the conflict. And that's what's going to get readers' attention. Because if you have six chapters building up to the conflict, and then two chapters of conflict, and then the resolution, you've wasted half your novel just explaining what's about to happen. So you really need to start it at the beginning. So I think I'm going to keep that. But maybe there's something that I need to fix. Um, maybe I need to explain something a little bit better for the reader or... Um, something like that and then they say um, there's not enough feeling shown so someone else said there was enough emotion this person saying not and I think that is something I need to work on show more feeling there's not too much body language shown so um, a lot of emotion is sent through body language so you need to incorporate more body language and I 100% agree and I try to pay attention to that but I'm just lacking at that so much but I do agree that I need to use way more body language and I have a list of 10 things that that's posted right where I write so I can look at it and the second thing is body language is dialogue so you don't need to tell every single thing through verbal dialogue but body language itself tells us stuff it tells emotion uh thoughts behaviors all this stuff so body language is extremely important in writing and um because think about in your daily life how you can be communicating with someone but you can tell a lot through their body language that they don't have to physically say so um, I keep that posted so that I can remember, but obviously it's something I still need to work on. And then their final feedback is show us, instead of telling us what the character is hearing or seeing, um, show us. So don't say outright, this is what the person sees. Like show. And um, that's something I think I struggle with, but it's a huge, huge, huge rule. Actually on that same list of 10 things that I just shared, that's the very first one is show, don't tell. And that's something that every professor I've had is really stressed and it's something huge, huge in writing and it's extremely important. So clearly I need to do a better job of that, but I really need to work on that. And uh, and I think I think that person left quite a bit of good feedback. They weren't, they didn't really give me anything that uh, was really complimentary, but they gave a lot of criticism, but in ways that was helpful and ways and offered some kind of advice on how to fix it. So I feel that that person is probably pretty experienced in writing and critiquing and they gave me a lot of helpful feedback. So the very last, last comment says, good so far, I feel sorry for this poor girl. So that's something that you need to pay attention to when people say, it's just like how the reader feels about each main character. Do they hate her? Do they like her? Do they feel sympathy for her? Um, and that's something, one time I had a professor ask me, when I was writing a story and then it got critiqued, he was like, how do you want us to feel about the main character? And I, it occurred to me that I didn't think about it. I didn't care how the main character was viewed. So that's, you know, everything you write in a story needs to have a meaning. So um, at this point she says, I feel sorry for this poor girl talking about the main character. And really I do kind of want people to feel sorry for her at the beginning and um, kind of have some sympathy for her. So this is a good direction. When and where does this story take place? That's something I feel like I do need to describe better because it's set somewhere in a time where I wasn't alive. But I think through the story, I explain it a little bit more, but I think I, I need to explain that better. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down as set the setting pretty much. So this is only the first chapter and a lot of feedback. I feel like stuff is explained later on in the story. So I kind of, these some of their questions are gonna be answered soon if they keep reading. But it is something that I need to pay attention to. Am I being too vague in the beginning and I'm leaving too much out in the beginning? Um, should I tell something sooner or wait? And that's really just my discretion and how I feel that it should that it should go. But um, a lot of feedback, so just going over all these comments in general, a lot of them were um, grabbed my attention a little bit better and there were some things that were a little bit confusing and they didn't quite understand. Some of their answers or some of their questions are going to be answered later um, and some of them I want to keep it later and some of them maybe I do need to tell them now. So I think that's as a whole there was a little bit of confusion and 
their attention wasn't quite grabbed, but a lot of people said it was very emotional and that they could connect. So that was cool. All right, so at another time, I am going to reply to these comments on my own time. Um, I don't have any time right now, but uh, I hope you like this. This is just the first chapter, so I'm going to keep going and see how many comments um, I can read in the ch second chapter. So if you like this format, let me know. So let me know if you want me to do another video of feedback from the second chapter or something like that. And maybe I'll actually um, bring up my novel and use their criticism and kind of re rework it and I think I'm gonna go ahead and let them read the entire novel and get all their comments before I go back and try to revise it, anything but I'll definitely share that with you guys as well so if you want to see this in a the same format with the second chapter let me know in a comment or something like that or drop a like but this was really cool it's just, it's just really good to get people's feedback and it's extremely helpful so I know what I need to fix and what I'm doing correctly so, um, I hope, I hope this was a little bit interesting for you. I know it's just a lot of me talking about what's wrong with my novel, but that's a huge part of writing a novel. So, um, I'm going to let you guys go, but thank you for watching and let me know if there's anything in this series that you do want to, that you do want to see, or if there's any questions about my novel that, or writing it itself or the critique process itself that you guys want to know about. I'm totally down to make a video sharing some information with you guys or, kind of explaining other stuff or sharing a piece of a writer's lifestyle with you guys. So thank you for watching. Stay motivated, stay inspired, and stay happy. See you guys.